welcome back. You have just tuned into Women's AM. This morning, I am joined by Sister Saima, Sister Nusrat, and of course, our special guest, Sister Zara, who I'm looking very forward to listening to. How are you doing, sis? Alhamdulillah. You know, I'm, I'm excited that you're on the show. Why? I love poetry, and I love spoken word. <laughs> Mashallah. Now, tell me, I know you've been on before, and you've talked about what inspires you, but what I want to know is, what is that one topic that really inspires your poetry? Um... I've written quite a few pieces um, about poverty and I think that's what kind of inspires me the most. SubhanAllah, there's so much going on around the, uh, around the world. There's a lot of poverty and may Allah make it easy for everyone who's suffering. And yeah, um, every time I kind of hear about what's going on in Palestine or Syria, Burma, across the world, it just kind of breaks my heart and I start, you know, putting the pen to the paper and I start writing and alhamdulillah, it just... So this is the beauty um, of brotherhood, sisterhood, sisterhood the fact that definitely. regardless of what our situation is, how we, how good we might feel it, we still feel and we're still conscious of what's yeah. going on to and others the around the world. That we have. Alhamdulillah. Now, there's another thing I'm going to ask you. Mm -hmm. I want you to re read me a poetry. Um, Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry, putting no, you on the spot. It's okay. But I think everyone is looking forward to that, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, what is it about? Which one are you going to read? The one I'm going to say is um, it's called Blessings and um, relating to the topic is about blessings that we have in this dunya, um, in this world um, that we don't realise. So, yeah. Go ahead. That one. Um, okay, Bismillah. Bismillah, in the name of Allah, do I begin to ask for a few minutes for you to listen in. It's a blessing that we were born this way. It's a blessing that we were even formed this way. This is a blessing from Allah, the one high above. Like, do we really even truly care and love a child that's been born into this world? Are you going to treat it equal, regardless if it's a boy or girl? Are you ready to take the responsibility if your child is diagnosed with a disability? But look, it's like I see sisters always complain about their looks but isn't it about time you took a very good look into the blessings that you receive and really care about those in need because there's so many blessings in our life so many blessings but we don't think twice we never thank Allah enough for what we have but we still wish for more of what we don't have because we want more and more we want more and more of everything Exactly. Like beautiful words. I think very it's very relevant to our topic yeah, very today. Very yeah, very which, let's just go and move into that now. I think <laughs> you've inspired us to talk about it even more, mashallah. Let's go straight into her sh the show where we go straight to her views, where today we'll be discussing young mothers raising young children. No, we. Sorry, the, um, come back to you. I know you want to get in, but I'm going to go back to the sisters who are watching. The importance our deen places on motherhood is known. It's recorded in Sunan Ahmed that the Prophet wasallam said that Jannah lies at the feet of your mother. But in today's society, young mothers have become an issue of debate. Is being a young mother an issue and in what context? As always, this is a live show, live discussion with the sisters on the panel, and we would love to know what you think. So please do call the studio to put your comments or questions to the panel. The number is on your screens now, or you can tweet us at Islam Channel, hashtag women, Ram 15. Now, I'm really looking forward to this discussion. So I think it's yeah. very, very relevant to most of us here. Um, Sister Zara, you just you know you said a poem about blessings. And just listen to the lyrics. It's such a reminder that children are blessings. Yeah, so course. why is it there's such issues surrounding young mothers in today's um, to, in today's world? I think everyone has well, not everyone. Like, a lot of people have this perspective that you know being a young mother, you're not able to live up to the responsibilities, and um, you know look after your child the same as if you were you know um, of a, of an elder age. However, you know. Obviously, speaking for myself, my daughter, um, who's actually watching, Sophia. Assalamu alaikum, sure. Sophia. <laughs> <laughs> she's going. Um, she's going to be four um, in a few days, inshallah. So, um, it's you know, a cute age. Yeah, yeah, alhamdulillah. And I'm going to be 25 next month. So I'm well, speaking from the experience, and I feel like, you know, alhamdulillah, you are able to live up to that responsibility. And you know, I think being a mother at a young age, it teaches you a lot, and you're kind of growing yourself in that yeah. sense as well. But you know, you can, you know. You know, Allah blesses you with the, you know, the ability to be able to look after your child. And, you know, I had um, younger siblings when I was growing up. And I think a lot of girls my age now have younger siblings. So you're kind of bringing up your, you know, your brothers and sisters from a younger age. So 
Um, I don't know. I so just that feel sort like of this prepared perception. you. Yeah, it, yeah, of course, definitely, definitely prepares you. Like changing my little brother's nappies and getting the milk ready and stuff yeah. like that. I think it kind of prepares you and makes you ready for adult life. And you know, nowadays, you know, the girls they grow up so quickly anyway. And um, alhamdulillah, I think children are definitely a nikmah. They're definitely a blessing. And um, yeah, I think. Why do you think there is such an issue? That's the thing we see it as a blessing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But why do you, why do you think, Sister Nusra? I think a lot of it comes down to our perceptions of childhood and youth yeah. and how actually when we think about these concepts they're actually socially constructed depending on the times that we're living in so they change over time so the concept of childhood actually first emerged in the 17th and 18th century by um, by people like philosophers such as John Locke and generally through education and books that actually um, started the portrayal of children actually through sculptures, pictures, um, children's books. But previous to that point, children were actually seen as actually being um, miniature adults, effectively, as we see in Charles Dickens, you know, Oliver. Those are just <laughs> examples of that. But how our understanding of responsibility in childhood is actually different depending on the time. So a young lady of, say, the 1950s would be, would be different in terms of our expectation compared to a young, a young lady now. Mm -hmm. And even we see through um, the Prophet's time, for example, Aisha radiallahu anha, mm -hmm. um, her level of maturity, her wisdom, was, ours, yeah. very much surpasses ours today. Mm -hmm. So we find that when we say the term child, it's socially constructed. The current view, however, that we have and why there's such an, um, an, an issue about people believing that young mothers are not capable of parenting. Well, this is what I was going to ask you next because this very much ties in with the question, why do you think there's a perception that young mothers aren't capable? Of parenting. It, it's because as well, because of the current view in society that because they're young, they're old enough to do certain things as yeah. opposed to others. Now, when we, when we start putting age limits on people and not looking at the level of maturity, but rather age is a number, that becomes a problem because it creates an inconsistency. Mm -hmm. So you're old enough to, um, to do certain things, but not others. Of course. That yeah. creates an inconsistency. So settling down is seen as wrong, but it's okay for you to, to be... Um, yeah, yeah, you see, that's a really interesting point because that's going to be one of the things I was going to ask you because you know it's all about numbers certain numbers this is okay for you to do this certain numbers you can't do that so it's a bit of a confusion but why is there such a thing with per um Young mothers. Mm. I think um, today there is generally a perception that if you n met somebody that has gotten pregnant and had a baby at 16, immediately they are seen as, well, you've ruined your life. Yeah. yeah? Because now how are you going to pursue um, your uh, education? How are you going to pursue a career? Um, you're too young. And I agree with you. You were somehow old enough to have done the deed. Yeah, but not old enough to take the responsibility that comes from doing the deed, yeah. um, which is, this comes from when humans legislate. This is just a fact, yeah. When humans legislate, you will see inconsistencies, you will see contradictions. Alhamdulillah, you don't have that in Islam because Islam <coughs> emphasizes on maturity, that you could have a son who's 23, you could have a daughter who's 26, yeah, and you may decide that they are not ready for marriage. Definitely. And even though our community would find that unpalatable for me to say, this is how we need to look at things. The criteria for being married in Islam, the criteria for becoming a father or mother in Islam, first and foremost, is your maturity and then your consent. You need to be ready. You might want to get married, but you might not be ready. Mm -hmm. Marriage and being a mother and being a father is very, very closely tied to accountability. Everything we do, every atom's way of good, every atom's way of bad, is going to have to be accounted for on your maqiyama. Mm -hmm particularly being a mother and a father. There is so much accountability linked Just to this. Just going back to one of your previous comments that you said was um, you're, you're old enough to do the deed but not carry out the responsibility yeah. along with that. But if you look at the, scientifically the, the biology of a woman, mm. it's the biology and the body that tells you when you are ready to be a mother. So what, mm. how much of a difference does, does age make in it? Yeah. Well, you could tell me that. Yeah. How much of a difference does age make when it comes to having children and pregnancy and childbirth and parenting? Well, I think you can still be at your prime, but the issue does boil down to maturity. You may have the mm. functions, uh, you may, uh, well, let's just call it what it is. You may have the functions and have the ability to have a child or to um, be engaged in that kind of um, relationship to, that facilitates a child, but do you actually have the maturity? And partly why we have this opinion of young people not being able to, not being able to have this kind of responsibility it boils down to the hedonistic lifestyle mentality we have. Mm. We find this idea of you only live once, you're too young, just live your life the way it is and you can worry about that later. That's, re um, that's endorsed by things such as TV shows that promote this kind of hedonism. We find 
find in the song Mot the motto by Drake, YOLO, this is the problem we have. And as a result of that, you find a lot of social problems that emanate from this kind of thinking. Um, also, within um, reality TV and stereotypes of people not being able to cope, we find uh, shows like Teen Mum, mm. 16 and Pregnant, that show the difficulties of this, along with yeah. these very, very, let me categorically state, these some of the stories that we hear of people not being able to parent at a young age are anomalies, which are not generally the representation of young people mm -hmm. as a whole. And because of that, a lot of people think that because you're young, you shouldn't have a child, and henceforth sometimes delay the process, which in, in some cases makes it harder as a whole mm. to have children. Like if you look at the example of Zara, if you don't mind me saying, like mm. I personally feel, and you can tell me if this is true, I, I, do you feel that maybe you were able to take on board the role of being a mother at the age of 20 you must have been, um, because of you, because of your biology, or because of Islam? Um, I think, I think definitely, and I think um, the f first and foremost, Islam. Mm. You know, understanding the, the role that you have as a mother mm. and as um, bringing up a child, especially, um, you know, as a young parent, you know, and the different morals and different understandings that you already have. Mm. Like when I um, was having my daughter, I was. Um, eight months pregnant, doing my dis dissertation in my final year of studies, and to, to some, to some, that's like, whoa, you know, you've messed up your life, and you've just finished uni, and you're going on to, you know. You see, that's a very interesting uh, angle that, inshallah, we're going to get into after the break. The issue of, you know, study yeah, and career. Definitely. I mean, so much. Alhamdulillah, it's been a very informative discussion. But we will be back, going for a short break just now. Before that, a reminder. of this week's competition.